Stand up, speak to this side. Everybody on this side, stand up, speak to that side. And as you're doing that, the praise team's gonna come on. How y'all doing? How y'all? worship with us. So let's sing together.
still saved.
Did you trust me? If there's one thing that a lot of us have experienced during these past few months, some of us have experienced fear. But I'm thankful that the Bible says that perfect love casts out all fear. And fear is another word for Satan. And the Bible says that he's a deceiver. And he's a liar. So tonight, we are here to proclaim
This is what the sovereign Lord says to his own. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am.
you preach God's word. Everybody give Stoney a hand. Man, have you enjoyed the praise and worship tonight? Give God a round of applause tonight for his wonderful mercy and grace. Uh, Monica, thank you, and Savannah, and Stacy, and Jeremy, and uh, Kip, and Ray, and Caleb, and all that's here tonight from uh, from our church. Uh, we're just uh, we may seem tonight like we're on spiritual steroids. Uh, that's because this is the first in-person worship service that we've been in since March. The, since the first of March. So, uh, listen, if nobody else gets blessed tonight, we're going to be blessed. And uh, we thank God for the privilege uh, to be here tonight. And uh, man, the music was just on fire tonight, wasn't it? And uh, I praise God tonight for who he is and what he's doing. If you have your Bible, I want to get right to the scripture tonight. I want you to turn with me uh, to the book of 1 Peter. Uh, the book of 1 Peter. Uh, let me tell you who Peter's writing to while you're finding that. Peter's writing to a group of believers that were saved on the day of Pentecost. And after their conversion to Jesus Christ, they began to experience trials and tribulations and difficult times. Uh, could be compared to the day that we're living in today. So Peter writes this letter, and he's really to encourage them and exhort them in how glorious and how wonderful the gospel of Jesus Christ really is. See, may we never get away. May we never get away what God has done for us yep. in Jesus Christ. Amen. And it's the only way, the only thing that can really encourage me when I get down and exhort me when I'm up. Amen. And so I praise God. I'll read nine verses tonight and just preach what I believe the Lord has laid on my heart. Would you stand in honor of the reading of the Word of God? The Bible says, Peter, the apostle of Jesus Christ, to the pilgrims, uh, that's sojourners, that's people that's just passing through of the dispersion in Pontius, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Elect, I know that's a word that scares Baptists a lot, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father in sanctification of the Spirit for obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, I hope you're listening, according to his abundant mercy, has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith, for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you've been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to the praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, Though now you do not see him, yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. And the Bible goes on to say that the prophets didn't even know really what they were, what they were giving to the people and that angels desire to look into this glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Would you pray with me? Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Would you ask the Lord tonight to speak to you directly? to speak to your heart. Maybe you're here and you need to be encouraged and exhorted by the gospel, but you may be here and you may be a dry bone that needs to come to life tonight and really be converted to Jesus Christ. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we've praised you, we've worshiped you by music. And God, as we open the scriptures now, I pray the Holy Spirit would use the truth of the word of God uh, Lord, to encourage those that need encouragement, to exhort those that need to be exhorted, but God, to convict those maybe that need to be saved tonight, yeah. that really need to be a, a real Bible salvation conversion from you, not some easy believism gospel, Lord, that has permeated our churches all across the land, but God, a real Holy Ghost salvation. 
And Lord, I promise to give you the praise, honor, and the glory. Do away with me tonight. I surrender afresh and anew. God, just use my lips to speak your truth. Use my mind to think your thoughts. And God, walk through me tonight and preach through me. And may Jesus Christ be preeminent in the message. I pray and believe in his name. Amen. And you can be seated, please. Thank you for standing for the reading of God's word. God's glorious gospel. When you really when you're glorious, the gospel of Jesus Christ really is. It, it really should put us on our faces. Uh, now, I know that we praise and worship, but listen, when we get to heaven, we're going to be on, on our faces before Almighty God just because that we can't believe that God in his mercy and in his grace would do for us what only he can do in this glorious gospel that he's given us in Jesus Christ. So the Apostle Peter, uh, after he preached at Pentecost, the church began to go through trials and tribulations. And I want to say to you that we're living in difficult days tonight, Pastor. But listen, I'm telling you, the church is alive and well. Yes, the Bible declares that the gates of hell right. cannot prevail yeah. against the real church of Almighty God. Yes, because sir. we've got a Savior, we've Come got on. an advocate that's at the right hand that's of right. God the Father tonight, Amen. making intercession yeah. for the saints of God according to the will of God. First John 3 Come says on. that Jesus Christ was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. At the cross, Jesus Christ literally destroyed death, hell, and the grave. And we've got the living hope tonight in Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. It's the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. It's, it's unbelievable to me. And the people that he's writing to, they, they see this great movement at Pentecost, but now they're going through a challenging time. Anybody want to do a challenging time tonight? Fear really is alive. Anybody experience fear? Anybody experience doubt? I think that's normal, but the greatest encouragement, the greatest encouragement you'll ever receive is from understanding and applying, really understanding the gospel. I'm not sure, I'm not confident, Brother Pastor, in our churches that we've even got the gospel right, according to the scriptures. I don't know about you, but I want to get it right. It makes no difference what I've been taught as a child. What does the word of the living God say? Amen. That's what's right and everything else is wrong. And so I just want to show you several things tonight about this glorious gospel. It's the gospel of God's glory. In other words, God saved you for himself. Really, God didn't save you to get you out of hell and into heaven. God saved you to get him out of heaven in a human body, to take up residence in this human body, to resurrect us from the dead so that God could put his image back on us and then manifest his gospel through the church everywhere we go. It's a gospel of God's glory. Notice with me, first of all, the mystery. The mystery of this gospel which is recorded in verses 1 and 2. And we need to re be reminded that you'll never be able to figure out salvation. That's right. It's a mystery of God. It is, it's such a great mystery that this passage records that, that all three persons of the Godhead, the, tr the triune Godhead, the Trinity of God, all three persons are involved if you've ever been converted. See, here's the problem. What most of us has been taught in church all of our lives, that at any time, anywhere, that if we'll pray a sinner's prayer, that God will forgive us, he'll write our name in heaven, then we go and live our lives the way we want to. No, that's not what the Bible teaches. Oh, no, it's much, much more complicated than that. Come on. It takes a sovereign work of Almighty God. Now, I believe that anybody can be saved when God deals with them. But I want to show you from this passage the mystery of God's glorious gospel. Notice with me, first of all, that this mystery, it, it, it's such a mystery that human science will ever ne and ne never be able to understand it or manipulate it. NASA will never be able to build a machine that will understand the gospel of Jesus Christ. I mean, really, it's such a mystery that no human will ever be able to comprehend. Listen, I cannot comprehend what God did for me in, in saving me. I just read it in the Bible and thank 
Dear God, thank you that when I was a dirty sinner on my way to hell, I didn't want anything to do with you. That you pursued me by your mercy. You pursued me by your grace. And you gave me Jesus Christ when I repented and believed on him. It's such a mystery. How God can take a dirty sinner like us and make a saint of the living God in justification tonight. I'm as perfect as Jesus is positionally. It's a mystery. And it, it, the Bible says it is such a mystery that the prophets, when they preached this gospel, they didn't fully comprehend. And, and get, catch this one, that the angels desired to look into this. In other words, the angels in heaven tonight are, are looking into the gospel. They don't understand. Listen, they cannot be redeemed. They cannot be saved. In other words, when we get when we get to heaven, when we go to the great wedding ceremony, yes. the angels of God are going to step aside right. and the redeemed of God are going to walk down the aisle and God the Father is going to perform the wedding ceremony and we're going to be married forever to Jesus Christ. The angels don't understand. That's right. Amen. Right. We don't understand. I just thank God I got in on it. Praise the Lord. Notice number one, the mystery. Notice number one, that the Father chooses you to salvation. The Father chooses you. Now, a lot of people have a, have a lot of difficulty with verse number two. Because that word elect, you say, do you believe that you have to be in the elect to be saved? I do. You say, who's the elect? It's those that are willing to repent and believe. God will give everybody an opportunity to repent and believe when he's working with them. Like one old preacher told me years ago, when, you, when you're preaching the Bible, if you preach expositionally, when you, come to the, when, when you come to election, preach election. When you come to the free will of man, preach the free will of man. It's a mystery. I'm not a Calvinist. I'm a Biblicist. Amen. I just believe the Bible. Amen. I believe that when we when we, when, we, when we get to heaven, it's going to be for whosoever will. And you're going to turn around and on the back of the gate, it's going to be chosen from the foundation of the world. What a mystery. Amen. What a mystery. That God the Father would choose us. See, the, the election, the choosing of God. See, I don't choose God. He chooses me. Amen. A sinner's prayer will save nobody. Good if God is not initiating that, That's right, right. I heard the pastor pray in his office and I knew I was in good company. Right. He said, God, I pray tonight that you'll do something that only you can produce. Right. Well, what a great prayer. Amen. He believes right. Mm -hmm. The Father chooses us. And this election was not based on anything we've done. So you got to understand, you doing more for God does not make you more accepted. It does not make God love you anymore because God chose you. You did not choose him. Here's what Spurgeon said. Spurgeon said, if God had not chosen you for the foundation of the world, do you really think he'd choose you now? I mean, honestly. See, this mystery, it says elect according to the foreknowledge of God. So God's election was not based on anything that he saw that we could do for him. It's according to his Foreknowledge, the Bible says. And so the elect are the people, those that are willing to repent and believe. Now let me tell you a conviction I have. There's many people in church that are willing to, willing to believe. Let me ask you a doctrinal question. I'm here to help you tonight. Son, I'm in church. I'm having fun. I'm going to preach the Bible. Go ahead. Go ahead. Can you be saved just by believing? Not if you really understand what the word believe means in the Bible. See, our English language is so limited. And the Greek language is so broad. You not only believe, but you've got to receive. And if you're not willing to repent, yes, sir. the first words out of the mouth of Jesus Christ was what? Repent and believe the gospel. The last words out of the mouth of Jesus Christ was not the Great Commission. 
The last words out of the mouth of Jesus Christ was to the seven churches in the book of the Revelation. And what did he say to every one of them? Repent. John the Baptist, when he came as the forerunner, he said, repent. See, there's a huge population in our churches today who would not believe that Jesus would come and die for you and, and, and forgive you and you can continue to live your life on your own terms for your own glory. What a cheap salvation. What an unbiblical salvation. No, when God chooses, I must not I only believe, I must receive and repent. In other words, I'm willing to turn in the title deed of my life for the exchange line. So I turn in my life in repentance and faith. And in return, God gives me his life. See, that's real Bible salvation. So the Father chooses you to salvation. Secondly, the Spirit calls you. Notice what it says. In sanctification of the Spirit. This word sanctification, it means that the Spirit of God deals with individuals on a personal level and begins to set that person aside and apart for God himself. Let me ask you a question. Is the Spirit calling anybody to genuine salvation tonight? Here's a testimony that I hear a lot. You know what? I've been dealing with this for months. Well, why don't you go ahead and repent and believe it? I mean, why are you living in this? Why don't you go ahead and repent and say, God, I'm wrong, you're right. I'm going to change the way I think about myself. I'm going to repent. I'm willing to make you Lord of my life. I'm willing to absolutely give anything in my life to you that you want. You're going to be the master, and I'm going to be the servant. And that can only happen when the Spirit of God deals with you. Read the Bible. The Bible says with men, Jesus was telling them about this salvation. And the disciples, they asked a great question. Who then can be saved? You know what Jesus said? With men, it's impossible. But all things are possible with God. We just quote so much stuff out of context. That's talking about somebody being saved. And so the Spirit of God calls us in sanctification. He sets me apart from sin in conviction. By the way, if you're still living a sinful lifestyle and claiming to be a Christian, you're deceived. You're deceived. Read the book of 1 John. He that's really been born again cannot sin. It doesn't mean that I never sin. That that verb is in a, such a tense. It means that I cannot continue a habit and a lifestyle of sin because I've repented and believed. And God puts his seed inside of me. And when I sin, I come under conviction. Y'all ever come under conviction? As you receive Jesus Christ, so walk in him. How did you receive him? Faith and repentance. How do I walk with him? Faith and repentance. Listen to this statement. When he shows me him, I believe. When he shows me me, I repent. Amen. That's how you walk with Jesus Christ. So the Spirit of God, I'll never forget the night the Spirit of God. I believe the Spirit of God has to hand you up. And if God's dealing with you tonight and you're unwilling to turn loose of the reins of your life, I pray you go home tonight and don't get a wink of sleep. Boy, what encouragement to preach. You know why? Because I care for your soul. I want God to know you, and I want you to know God. I'll never forget the night God called me. I went to church as normal on a Sunday night. I tell people I was a better church member lost than most people are claiming to be saved. I was there every time the door. I did, I did everything. See, you can do everything we do at church and not be genuinely converted. But that Sunday night. Come on. That Sunday night, I was on the back row under a big old tent, and the Spirit of God, yeah. he began to deal with my heart. And I thought, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm a church member while I'm the president of our Sunday school class. I don't need to be the Spirit of God said, you're a phony, you're a fake, you're no more saved. You, you, you're not saved. You've never repented. You, you've believed since a child, but you've never surrendered to, to, the, to my lordship and allowed me to get inside of you and start living my life in you and through you. You're, you're lost. You need to be saved. I come under so much conviction, Pastor Steve. I began to sweat. I mean, I, I mean, listen, conviction worked on me physically. I got sick to my stomach. I didn't walk down that aisle that night. Son, I ran. Amen. I wanted to be free. Yes, I didn't want to carry that guilt. 
in that shame of all that past sin. I ran that. I slid in. You say, what did you pray? I have no idea what I prayed. Prayer doesn't save you. It's a person that saves you. I know in my heart, my mind, I said, God, here I am. If you'll take me the way I am, Lord, I give everything to you. I surrender fully. I repent. Amen. Son, I got up off that altar, out of that sawdust, and I was a new creature. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Amen. All things passed away. Before, all things become new. And we got churches today full of people that are so sinful and carnal all the time. I'll tell you what's happened. We've cheapened the gospel and we've filled our churches with unregenerate church members. That's the reason we fight like cats and dogs and can't get along. And we got new this and new that. No, there's one body of Jesus the Christ and it's the saints of God that make that up. People that have truly been converted to Jesus. Amen. Goodness, I'm, I'm having myself a time. <laughs> Hey, if y'all need to go take something out of the oven or something, just go in. I'm just going to preach. Amen. I've been preaching to a stinking camera for five months. And I finally see some faces. And some of you don't like it. Get over it. Get it. Just repent. Get over it. Come on. Come on. Son, I'm glad I'm in Watford, North Carolina. Amen. The, the mystery. That, and I got three points. And I'm not even halfway through the first one. So y'all better pack your lunch. That's all I can do. The Father chooses me. The Spirit calls me. Do you remember what the Spirit called you? Amen. Don't you examine yourselves. Do you remember when the Holy Ghost really called your name and called you out? But notice with me thirdly. I, I need to move on. What time is this deal over, Pastor? Whenever. No, okay. No, I've never finished a sermon, so don't tell me to finish it. The father chooses. The son calls. But notice this little this is the thing. The son cleanses. Notice what it says. Sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be added. No, multiplied. What's the difference? So here's the deal. This is talking about the suffering and the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ that makes the Father's choosing and the Spirit's calling bring cleansing by the blood of Jesus Christ. What can wash away my sins? Listen, nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. The only thing that satisfies a holy God, the Father, is the blood of Jesus Christ. And when you get converted, God takes your sin. Listen, past, present, and future. This is where you can't lose it. Because at the cross, Jesus not only died. I, I, was, I was in the future when he died on the cross. When he died on the cross, all my past sins were taken care of. All my present sins were taken care of. All my future sins were taken care of. Because the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us for eternity from all sin. Amen. Amen. I've got a terrible sinful past. It's none of your business what it is. God knows all about it. But you know what? I am not guilty. Amen. 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 I've been forgiven. Amen. God has right. taken my sins and he has put them as far as the east is from the west Amen. in the sea of forgetfulness. Listen, never to remember them no more. Ladies and gentlemen, if God has forgotten it and cleansed it, why do you keep bringing it up? Why do you keep bringing it up? That's right. Thank God for the cleansing of Jesus Christ. I'm trying to get through the mystery. It's just hard. I'm just trying to do it. It's just hard. Notice with me secondly. Let me move on. The miracle. The mystery is that God the Father chooses you, the Spirit calls you, and the Son cleanses you. But notice the miracle of God's glorious gospel. It's recorded in verses 3 through 5. And so this verse, these verses unfold the miracle that takes place when a person truly experiences Bible salvation. All through Jesus' ministry, he did many miracles. You remember? He fed the hungry. He took the fish and the loaves. He touched the lame. He raised the dead. He touched the crippled. He opened blinded eyes. He opened dead ears. He allowed those who couldn't speak to speak. But you know what? That's not the greatest miracle that Jesus did. The 
greatest miracle in all the Bible is when a person like you and I That's right. really get converted to Jesus Christ. And God takes somebody that's dead in their trespasses and sins and he wakes them up in Ephesians 2 1. He quickens them together with Christ. And when I get quickened, in other words, I get made alive. Listen. If you've been born again, you've got, a, you've got the nature of Jesus Christ that's been imparted to you. God stepped out of heaven, stepped in your yeah, mortal Lord. body. Yeah. You had a dead spirit. God resurrected you yeah. from the dead by the same spirit that got Jesus Christ up. If that's the case. Why are so many of our churches just so dead? See, Jesus didn't come to make bad people better. He came to make dead people alive. Amen. That's what they just sing about. He came to make, make dead people alive. So what is this miracle? Y'all listen carefully and I'll come up with it. First of all, there's a resurrected spirit from God. Look, listen to what it says. Who according to his abundant mercy. You know what mercy is? Mm -hmm. Mercy is when God does not give you what you deserve. Let me tell you what every person in the room deserves. You may think you're hot, but you're not. Mm. Every person in the room deserves to spend eternity in hell before you ever committed one sin. Because you were born in the likeness of Adam. Genesis chapter number 5. With the sinful nature fallen, you were as fallen as Adam was when he sinned. The Bible says that his life, the spiritual life, departed out of his body. And that's the way I was born. So God has to do something miraculous. God has to wake me up. And the Bible says, according to his abundant mercy, he has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So the Bible is very clear that before a person is born again to a living hope, that they have a dead spirit. Listen, dead people can't respond. Y'all have a cemetery? Thank God. You go out to a cemetery, go to the local cemetery, and you go out there and speak to those graves. See how many speak back. Dead people can't respond. So God has to do something for you that you can't do for yourself. Because my spirit's dead, I can't respond. And so as a result, every human being that's born in this world is born with a dead spirit. And Ephesians 2, 1 says, and you have the quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. He says we're begotten again to a living hope. This means that God places inside every Christian, every believer, the spirit of God. And he resurrects your spirit. In other words, the night I got converted, Pastor, I got resurrected from the dead. I hated church before then. I'm being honest. I didn't want to go. My mom made me go. Why would somebody that's lost want to come do what we're doing tonight? Mm -hmm. Now, what we don't understand is we've got people in our church roles that say they're saved and say they want to go to heaven. Come on. But don't want to go to church. Amen. Amen. Now, where I'm from, that's stupid. <laughs> Why would anybody want to go to heaven when heaven we're going to do what we do at church for eternity and they don't want to come on earth? Listen to this. I would not trust a salvation that does not get me to church. I would not trust to get me to heaven. Why do those people not come? They're lost. They're dead in their sins and trespasses. Because when I got born again, I couldn't stay away. You know who I hung out with the first three years of my Christian life? Y'all will laugh at me because I'm becoming one. The senior adults. <laughs> I didn't know anybody in our church. They loved old Missy and I because we got a, had a terrible past. And they listen. And I just, I, I just couldn't wait to get up on Sunday morning or on Sunday night or Wednesday night or went to Monday night visitation. You know why? Because God did something inside of me, and God put Himself inside of me. Matter of fact, here's what Romans says. It's five after eight. Here's what Romans says. Y'all only been here for an hour. You go to a movie, watch two and a half hours. Don't complain. Hush. <laughs> Here's what Romans says. Romans says that the same spirit that got Jesus Christ up from the dead got you up. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what it says. It's Romans chapter number 8. But if the, here it is, 8 verse 11. 
But if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. So the miracle of this is that God resurrects my dead spirit and gives me the same spirit that got Christ up. So I've got the Holy Spirit. Read John 10 if you really want to, if you really want to get your mind bogged. Read John 10. Here's what John 10 says. Those that love me and abide in my word, we plural, will come and make our abode with him. So inside of me, a believer, a real believer, I've got God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit living inside of me. I'm not going to have more of God when I get to heaven than I have on earth. Amen. The only difference is I'm not going to be inhibited by this sinful nature, nature in my flesh. Has your spirit been resurrected from the dead? If it has, please tell your face what's in your heart. <laughs> it's okay to smile. <laughs> it's okay to have fun at church. But I'm having a ball tonight. I'm a, I, I feel like a, a kid at a carnival tonight. <laughs> it's been five months, man. I'm just going to hang out right here at the candy store, okay? <laughs> but if you've been resurrected from the dead... Stop being a grumpy grouch at church. Here's what we need to do in our business meetings. Sister so-and-so, before we get started tonight, won't you stand up and give us a word of discouragement? <laughs> That's ridiculous, isn't it? No, we've got Christ living in us. In this body. That's the reason I change. I don't change because I'm spiritual. I change because he's spiritual. Amen. There's a resurrected. Is God resurrected your spirit from the dead? Notice, secondly, that there's a righteous standard. Notice what it says. Verse number four. To an inheritance. That's not a place. That's a person. To an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. What's reserved in heaven for me? An inheritance. An inheritance. Right. What is the inheritance? It's Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a righteous standing yeah. because of Jesus Christ. And when God the Father, come on, somebody hold my mule. I'm just going to shout for a minute. Yeah. When God the Father looks at Benfield tonight, yeah. he doesn't see me. He sees his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. that died on the cross Amen. and was buried and resurrected and ascended and as the right hand of the Father. God doesn't see me because I'm in Christ and Christ is in me. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That's the only reason God doesn't pour his wrath out on people that are born again. You think it's bad now. You wait till the rapture happens. Mm -hmm. You wait till the people of God and the spirit of God get removed from this earth. You think there's rioting and looting and people are going crazy? You wait till we get out of here. Listen, the wrath of God has been held back right now somewhat because the church of the living God's here. But when we're removed and the spirit of God is removed, all hell is going to break loose. But thank God I'm not going to be here yeah. in the first Thessalonians yeah. chapter yeah. number four. Yeah. Listen, the Bible says that the trump of God's going to sound. Yeah. The archangel's going to step out. The yeah. trump of God's going to sound. Oh. The dead in Christ yeah. is going to rise yeah. first. Yeah. Then we who live and remain are going to be called up. Together with them in the air. Listen, I'm going to heaven. I, I love my parents. I, I got a dad in heaven, but that's not the reason I'm going to heaven. Amen. Uh -oh. Come on. Mm. Let me ask you a question. I've asked a lot of questions tonight. I've not given much many answers, but I've asked a lot of questions. <laughs> if Jesus was not in heaven, would you still want to go? I've heard people say, man, I can't wait to get to heaven. I'm going to sit down beside that crystal sea, and I'm going to trout fish while you're <laughs> unbiblical. I'm not going to be fishing in heaven. Uh -uh. Praising Jesus. I've heard people say, I'm going to go there, and I'm going to go on that heavenly golf course. Listen, we're not going to play golf in heaven. What do you think heaven is? It's a continuous worship service from ages to ages yeah. and ages yeah. and ages. And we're going to lay our crowns yeah. at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to have church in heaven. 
the, the church is going to be together because of our righteous standing. Amen. And God the Father is going to look at you and look at me. Yes. And the book of the Revelation said the books are going to be open. I'm probably going to be at the front of the line. I'm B. I don't know if it's in alphabetical order or not. <laughs> but Benfield's going to come up. My name's going to be called. And by the way, you can't cook God's books. Amen. My name is God. I'm going to stand before God. I'm not going to stand before my wife. I'm not going to stand before my peers. I'm not going to stand before a, some judge of a court. I'm going to stand before holy God by myself. Jesus Christ, yeah. my advocate, my lawyer, mm -hmm. is going to represent me. And he'll rise to his feet and he'll say, Father, he's mine. Yeah. He's mine. Yeah. June the third, look at the books, Father. Sealed to the day of redemption in God's books. Look at the books. June the 13th, 93, Ben feels slid in in repentance and faith. And I got inside of him. I've been living inside of him ever since. And the Father's going to say that I'm, I'm, I'm well pleased, not with Ben Field. I'm well pleased with my son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Enter to the joy of your salvation. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm. Yes. Folks, won't you listen to me? If you've prayed this know nothing prayer, God's never really dealt with you. You've never really repented when the books are open. The gospel say there will be many in that day. Mm. Many. In that day. It's going to say, but Lord, I prophesied in your name. Well, Lord, I, I, I preached your gospel. God can use who he wants to to get the message. Lord, I prophesied in your name. God, I was a member at Peace Baptist Church. Well, I sang in the choir. I sang in the praise team. I, I played an instrument. I was the Sunday school superintendent. I was the pastor. I was the deacon. I even went to Marvelous Mondays during the coronavirus in 2020. God, is that not in the book? That person would hear these tragedies. I never knew you. Let me translate. I never knew you because you wouldn't come my way. Mm. You wanted to do it your way. Mm. You were trusting in a false teacher of the gospel that you've heard on TV or in a pulpit in your local town. I drew you and gave you many opportunities, but you said no. You were unwilling to repent. You wanted me, but you wanted your life also. Here's what Jesus said now to <laughs> Jesus said if a man or a woman is not willing to forsake all that they have and their own life also they cannot be my disciple but thank God humble myself like a child and by faith repent and surrender it all to Christ. God does this miracle. God resurrects me from the dead. God gives me this wonderful righteous standing and now I've got this reserve security that nothing can separate Can y'all see the glory of this gospel? Can you see the mystery? That the Father chose you. That the Spirit may be calling you tonight. That the Son will cleanse you. And then the miracle. That when I respond properly, God will resurrect my spirit from the dead. Give me a righteous standing. Because I won't have to stand before God the Father on my own. Because Jesus will stand for me. This reserve security that no matter what happens, he promised, I'll never leave you or forsake you. Hallelujah. Praise God for the glory.
glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. Nobody looking or leaving the place. Would you search your heart tonight? And I'm not a I'm not one of these pastors that's going to manipulate you and try to lead you in prayer. But I do want to ask you a couple questions. We're going to sing tonight about being saved. And we're going to praise God for being saved. Let me ask you, if you you'd say, Brother Stoney, I know without any doubt in my heart and mind tonight, I can take you to the place and the time Spirit of God called me out. And I responded, not only by faith, but I responded by repentance. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleansed me. I know for sure that I've been converted to Jesus Christ. Folks, this is not a popularity contest. This is a, this deals with eternity. If you know, if you know that you know that you know that you know, you've been converted, that Christ did something for you that you cannot do for yourself. Can I just see your hand just raise it there as high as you can get it? I know. I know it goes home. God bless you, folks. God bless you. For those of you that could not lift your hand, I'm not here to pressure you. I love you. And I want you to know God the way the Bible teaches. Would you be willing tonight to Repent and believe on Jesus Christ. That God might perform that miracle inside of you if God's really dealing with you tonight. You know, this could be your last opportunity. Would you be willing to come to this altar tonight as a sinner and just say to God, God, I'm a sinner. I'm willing to repent tonight and believe on Jesus Christ. I want the God of the Bible to live in my body. I truly want to be saved. And know it. While they sing. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. But if God's dealing with you, this altar is open tonight. You come and humble yourself before Almighty God. He'll save you. He'll change you. Father, in Jesus' name, only you can do the work. Thank you for a pastor, a young pastor, that understands that only you can do the work. God, may you convert people tonight in this room to yourself. And just let us rejoice and get in on what you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Pastor, would you come and stand here at the front, please, as people need to respond? If you need to be converted, you come. If not, worship the Lord as we sing, as we stand and sing.